This is Ben Given of GG Media, and right now I am joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, Irish wrestling legend, the man behind OTT Wrestling. It is the one and only Joe Cabre. Nice That's, having uh, you. That's some, some intro. <laughs> Thanks I always, for having I always me. like to big him up. <laughs> <laughs> you really bigged me up there. Thanks. <laughs> well, Joe, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Yeah, very good. So, again, you are the mind behind the biggest promotion in yeah. wrestling right now. A meteoric rise for OTT. Yeah. Just Four a, years. Yeah. Been celebrated. Just a whole lot of people kind of working really hard with a common goal of kind of promoting Irish wrestling, which has been quite cool. Yeah. Uh, what uh, kind of mindset did you go into? Did you think OTT was going to blow up to the size it was whenever you started it out like four years ago? Or did you have like a game plan ahead in mind like, Two years from now, we'll be at this point. Three years from now, we'll be here. Um, I suppose after the first show, it was just kind of like, let's see if we can make enough money to do another one. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Essentially, I mean, we borrowed a friend's projector and, uh, you know, I remember sitting at home and trying to make uh, all the screens for the projector and, and, and things like that. And yeah, it was just like kind of like trying to see if we could, uh, you know, produce enough funds to produce another show and uh, lucky enough we did you know we covered our costs so yeah it's more building and building and building yeah of like, course you know what I mean thinking about the next show yeah I mean like if you keep losing money um, you know you can't you can't continue so yeah pretty much uh, so fourth year anniversary of OTT we saw a lot of international talent mixed yeah. in with a lot of the homegrown talent because Irish wrestling th in part in thanks to OTT and efforts from like FFPW and training new talent yeah uh, we've seen like a big boom in homegrown talent people like more than hype like Michael May yeah uh, recently Liam Royal yeah. debuted on OTT he's been uh, blowing up on the scene uh, but also a lot of imports from like uh, a new presence, a lot of connections. We saw New Japan stars. We saw, you know, Ring of Honor stars make a lot of appearances at OTT. Where do you strike that balance uh, whenever you're, you know, running a show, booking a show uh, on how much import uh, can I rely on and how much do I need to focus on, you know, the people that we have here? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a... It's just a kind of, I mean, when you look at last year, we kind of introduced contenders, and the idea of that was it was kind of twofold. It was kind of like to get the, uh, the younger guys some ring time, but also enable some of the young guys, like more than hype, like Scotty Davis, uh, an opportunity to step in the ring with guys that have years of experience, international talents like Will Ospreay, and, and just put the guys in the ring together so they can learn. Um, you know, I always say that the wrestling business is something that you kind of, you can stay in the gym and, drill all day but unless you're out there in front of a crowd you're never gonna you know you're never gonna reach the next step you know what I mean so contenders uh, for us has been a platform where guys have got to a certain level where they're able to go onto the major shows like the National Stadium like you know you'd Raven Creed uh, mix it up with Rocky Romero and uh, you know international stars like that and um, you know as I said some of the guys have got opportunities to mix it up with Will Ospreay as well and uh the Rascals and Satamora as well. So um, it's kind of like, it's twofold. It's kind of like we have international uh, stars to kind of um, kind of draw your casual fans as well, your wrestling fans, but also it, it enables us to have our younger talent gain more experience by being in the ring with, with talents like that, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So Contenders so far has been a big success in showcasing young Irish talent. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is probably like the key thing you're looking for in the a uh, new guy who's like come up from FFPW or wherever and you look at them and you say this is the next guy who will be at the top of OTT a guy who'll be having like a singles match with a Will Ospreay or maybe beating like Jordan Devlin or you know being the next Irish guy for me uh, it's a lot of uh, it comes down to attitude you know I, it's I'm very old school in terms of like I, I like to the, the, my, my guys to have a respect for the business. I think it's very, very important. So, um, you know, everyone in their locker room is, is it's a positive, positive vibe and, and good energy, you know? So, um, having a good attitude will be the key one, because I mean, if you don't have a good attitude, if you don't have respect for the business, you're probably not going to go much further in it, you know, unfortunately. So attitude would be number one. And then I suppose, um, after that is just, you know, being able to find the talent and push that. So when you look at wrestlers, like, you know, you have, someone like a Michael May, who's a great technician. And then you have someone like, um, 
like a Jordan Devlin as well, and that are, you know, top, top quality talents. But then you also have guys like Club Tropicana who are more into comedy. So it's kind of like finding a young guy or young girl and finding the thing that they have their strongest uh, their strongest talent and making sure that that's the focus of what they do out there, you know? So if you're a good comedy wrestler, there's no point in going out there and trying to do flips like Will Ospreay. It's about finding what you bring to the table and, uh, and, and pushing that, you know, to the forefront and, and developing that to be as strong as, as it possibly can. I mean, it's like when you think of Flamita and Bandito, you think of like the high-flying acrobatics and a Will Ospreay. Um, when you think of um, guys like Walter and all, you, you just think of like brutality, you know? So it's like taking what what talent you have and, and pushing that to, to your strongest, you know? Yeah, I get it. It's, it's a good way to think. Like instead of thinking of like who's the next guy, it's who are the next big roster yeah yeah like the perfect backbone what gets the most variety while yeah. i covered all my bases yeah uh, so when booking the show you've had like a lot of crossover international talent a lot of irish homegrown talent you see the irish homegrown talent internally you know, grateful yeah. to learn from people like mako satamura or will yeah. osprey uh currently what would you say would be like even if it's impossible uh time zone wise you know could be many years in the past uh an irish wrestling talent and any import from any country, any time, what would be the dream match you would love to book? Oh, wow. Wow. God, there's... I mean, it just depends. I mean, when you put, like, say, a Colcabana on the table, and then you kind of, you know, look at, like, maybe... I could just imagine a match between Colcabana and Paddy M or someone like yeah. that, you know what I mean? It's, it just depends as to, as to what wrestler you have. Like, you know, I mean... Um, I suppose there's just so many matches that you could kind of mix it up. I mean, you could take a Martina and put her against, you know, a Sadamur or something like that, you know, which would be interesting as well. I suppose it's about, again, as it goes back to finding what Irish talents there is. I mean, I, I look at the, uh, the fan appreciation uh, show that we did there recently in September and just seeing the more than hype guys uh, mix it up with Sadamur and the Rascals was, uh, it was kind of like, it exceeded everyone's expectations, you know? It's just amazing. So matches like that are kind of always fun to make, you know what I mean? It's like you look at the imports that you have and then you look at the Irish guys and you go, well, what would be the most interesting matches? And to me, when I looked at the the lineup, I was like, you know, the Rascals and Sadamore against the Morton Hype guys would be just amazing. But then I suppose, you know, I mean, if you... Yeah, I mean, like, there's so much. I mean, Col Cabana. I, I think we actually did Col Cabana versus Martina and stuff like that, you know? So uh, that might have even happened in, in Belfast. But, yeah, I suppose uh, maybe British Strong Style against Morton Hype would be pretty cool as British well. Strong Style versus yeah. Morton Hype. Could, That's uh, yeah, very much on the cards. Still. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's still good relations there, so maybe one day. Yeah, that would be a killer. Like, that would be a main event pretty much anywhere yeah, on the yeah, island. Yeah. Even even outside of the island now, like in the UK. Yeah, yeah, of course. That would like, tear the house it's, down. It's great to see some of our Irish guys, like, you know, Scotty Davis and um, Morton Hype. And I, I believe the next one would be Raven Creed to kind of break out. But you can see them now on the international, you know, scene. Like, you know, you've Scotty Davis and uh, Valkyrie now, you know, working in Fight Club and, and, and places like that. And then you've some of the guys as well going to uh, TNT in. Manchester, um, I think Curtis Murray, Scotty Davis, uh, Eddie Stone. You know they're they're all starting to travel and gain exposure internationally, which is just amazing to see as well for the for for the Irish scene as well. I mean we're such I always say this as well like we're such a small little island and we've produced some of the, the best talent and realistically like wrestling's only been around here for like fifteen years. You know what I mean? It's it, it started with you know Fergal and Paul traveling off to England and you know learning the the um, learning to trade over there from Andre Baker. And then, um, you know, Duncan DeSorley went over and he also trained there and came back and learned some, you know, started teaching some guys up north. So it's uh, it's amazing to see, um, it's amazing to see it's happening again that some of the Irish guys and girls are starting to travel and, and, and make a noise over in the international scene as well. Yeah, definitely. The future's looking very bright mm. for like the Irish scene right now. Yeah. Like lots of talent breaking out from just the island. And right now, like Ireland, uh, over the last few years has produced like more big name talent like we're up there with like Japan or Canada I mean, really you, at this point I mean I seen a uh, I seen a picture on Facebook of a WWE truck there uh, last week and on the side of the truck was Seamus, Finn Balor and, and Becky Lynch you know what I mean so that yeah, says a lot you know three huge names yeah I mean and there's only so many rooms on that truck uh, so many uh, places on that truck you know and it's taken up by three Irish people which is just amazing to see as well 
Yeah, especially because I have like, you know, I hear people from like America contacting me online saying they've heard of like an LJ Cleary. Yeah, yeah, And it's yeah. like, they haven't even done like American shows yet and yeah. they're already making waves. I mean, look at Session Martina. I mean, I remember there last year, she was like uh, wrestling in Germany, then came home for like a few days and then went to, uh, you know, New Orleans to do the WrestleMania weekend. And then she came home for a few more weeks and then the next week she was going to Japan. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, that's doing just, stardom. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? She's over there at the moment killing it, representing Irish wrestling. And then you have Jordan Devlin as well and Tucker killing it as well on the uh, on the WUK scene as well. So it's just, I always say it, very proud of it as well for a little small island. What we've produced is just pretty amazing. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, take full credit. You've had a big hand put in that a, with. Put a hand you know? in it. I mean, there's there's a lot of people as well, like Fergal, Finn Balor, and, and Paul Tracy, and you know, even even Duncan DeSorley, You know, you know, it's a it's a yeah, a lot of people, a lot like, of people lot working, of people working hard. Together. Phil Boyd as well has produced a lot of talent. So it's just a lot of a lot of great hands. You know, working together and um, trying to develop because, like there's not much money in Irish wrestling. It's more kind of like, you know, kind of doing it for, for the scene, you know what I mean? And, and, and people with a passion that want to see the scene grow, which is kind of nice. Yeah. A uh, big, big future ahead for Irish wrestling for OTT, but I'm going to leave you off with one more hypothetical. Okay. Uh, we've been talking a lot I'll about, my best. don't worry. It's very easy. <laughs> uh, we've been talking a lot about you as a, you know, promoter and a booker, but you are also still a wrestler. Very seldom. I mean, like tonight I did a match, <clears throat> But it's um, my body's just not what it used to be anymore, you know. So, uh, like when wrestling was my focus, I was, you know, I, when I wanted to get to WWE, I was, you know, my diet was immaculate, you know, because it was my focus, it was my goal, it was what I wanted to do with my life, you know. So I, it was it, that was my focus. Right now, my focus isn't being a professional wrestler anymore. I still like getting out there and doing a few matches every year and. And hanging in the locker room with the boys, it's, it's 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 nice to be. But like in terms of my wrestling days, I can't really foresee myself going back to you know that being my focus. Yeah, being the full. Um, I'm pretty happy brunt in of the your focus. Yeah, yeah, pretty happy in the in the promotional side yeah. of things, and yeah, you know, do the odd few matches. Not every your year. first priority. But, yeah, uh, you can tell so, me. We're so gonna hit you with a hypothetical. Okay, let's so, uh, maybe w- rewind the clock <laughs> a little bit. Um, any title, any promotion, any time frame. What would be have been your dream title run in your wrestling career? Oh wow! I don't know. I'm a big, massive fan of like the older kind of the older wrestling, you know. So I mean, I would have been a big fan of like uh, the early '80s or sorry, the late '80s in WWE and the early '90s. So. Maybe an Intercontinental Championship run would have been nice the the, around that time, you know. Title, I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, you're know, like the guys that held that belt, you know, like Mister Perfect and um, Terry Von Erich and all. Like they were the guys, and Bret Hart were the guys that I kind of like, uh, kind of idolized as as a kid. Um, also, reading up on it, I think the uh, the Texas territory with the Von Erichs would have been pretty cool as well to be around at that time as well. Oh yeah, WCCW yeah. was yeah. Like insane. <laughs> yeah, I watched a lot of the documentaries as well. I think ECW might have been a bit too much for me so I probably would have skipped that one but yeah, like kind of anything with the uh, WCCW I suppose would have been pretty cool and um, yeah, an Intercontinental run around the late 80s, early 90s would have been pretty awesome as well. I yeah, yeah, very awesome. Yeah, I mean there was like so many great hands back then as well. And as you said, it was the Workhorse Championship. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You, you got to want to have the Workhorse, workhorse but, yeah. Championship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Joe, thank you very much pleasure, for joining man. us. It is a pleasure to speak you. to you. Thanks this is Ben Given from GG Media signing off. Thank you again. Joe Cabrera.